Ah, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Ross here with another Learning with Line 6. Um, sorry, anyone that was expecting Nick or Tony, you got me again. Um, I hope everyone is safe and well. Um, and let's do the awkward bit and make sure the levels are okay. So this is what my voice sounds like. As always, it's not great, but it's the only one I've got. And this is what the guitar sounds like. <laughs> Hopefully everything's coming through okay. And I'm going to turn this up in the room because I can. Um, and I'm going to feel awkwardly now until someone says, yeah, everything's cool and we can hear everything great. Um, in the meantime, I think my mic's on, so we'll uh, we'll crack on with the uh, with the intro. Um, we're going to look at the Cali Texas uh, amp model. We're going to do channel one and channel two. Um, and we're going to do a bit of a deep dive. Now, this is sort of my personal favorite model out of all of them, just because it does so much, uh, both channel one and channel two. Um, and we'll show you through some of that, some of the ways I use it and some of the ways that you can use it as well. Um, you can kind of just see there, uh, I've got the actual one. It's been my main amp for a bunch of years. Um, and it's just awesome. Um, like I say, it does a ton of different stuff, um, and we're going to go through what it can do. So, um, all about the model. So, Cali Texas Channel 1 and Channel 2, it's a model of a Boogie Lone Star. Um, and uh, there's a... Uh, when I say it's kind of blackface-based, um, it's very much in the Boogie camp. But yeah, you can get that kind of very traditional Fender thing. Um, and, and that's what I use it for. Um, oh, Tony's in the room. Evening, Tony. Hope you're well, mate. Um, it, it, it does the kind of Fender thing better, in my opinion, than Fender does it. Uh, it's an amazing pedal platform. We'll look at that as well. And it, it, it's just the best clean channel for me and does some great dirty stuff as well. So without further ado, let's go in. So bring up HX Edit for you. Uh, let's do that. So there we are. So this is the kind of setup that I've got. So I've got channel one there, channel two there. Um, I'm using a single cab. Now I've gone with a 212 Bluebell, uh, which if you kind of know what this is based on, you'd go, huh. But in a previous experiment, I found that that, particular cab is the closest to uh, the actual combo to the black shadow speakers now if you've got a power cab uh, the shade speaker model in there is um of the black shadow speaker a uh, model of the black shadow speaker so it's kind of super accurate um i've got some delay for a little bit later on for a little bit of fun and some talent in the form of hot springs um again i have these in parallel so you can hear the dry signal um and then just add those effects to it. So the, um, at the moment, these are just kind of straight out of the box. The cab itself um, is pretty much stock. I have changed the mic for a 67 uh, condenser, and that's all I've done there. But I have not touched the amp as of yet. So as much as the Cali Texas uh, is one of the more easy kind of boogie models to dial in, when you get into the Mark series, that's a minefield. Um, this is much easier to dial in, but you can still get lost really quickly and still make it sound interesting, shall we say. So that's something to bear in mind with the controls. Now, oh, turn my email off. I do apologize. There we go. That's not going to be binging anymore. Um, so something to bear in mind with, with any kind of boogie amp and any model of any boogie amp um, the controls are super interactive. Uh, the the drive knob can make it bassier, obviously dirtier or cleaner, but it affects everything else, um, every other frequency. The EQ is interesting as well because it's pre-gain uh, stage. So essentially, any of these are pushing the front of um, the actual preamp. So... Adding more bass isn't necessarily going to add more bass. Um, it's 
it's going to react with a bunch of different stuff and potentially on high gain stuff can sound kind of flubby. But this is kind of what it sounds like out of the box. <laughs> Guitar, by the way, uh, and I'll put the screen on to show you. Uh, guitar, trusty Pacifica 612V. It's getting dirty and needs a restring, but it's killer. I uh, love this guitar. So here we go. Back to it. So what we're going to do, my first kind of um, thing that I do on these traditionally is take the bass all the way down. Um, because I'll have the drive normally, and this is actually doing a little bit of experimenting um, sort of earlier, I found some new sounds. So I'll kind of usually leave the treble and presence um, sort of where they are, bring the mids down a touch, um, and yeah, gain somewhere just over seven. And that sounds like... <laughs> So bring now normally on most amps you would not kind of see the bass off but because there's so much bass in this um already it, it's not really losing that much bass just kind of tightening things up kind of the same with the mids you're not losing too much mids if you scoop all the mids out But you'll notice if I bring this gain down now to, let's see, five. Now it sounds kind of thin and weedy, so we can bring that bass up, bring the mid up. Now, the more you crank this drive, the more bassy it's going to get. So if we get into kind of um, crunchy territory. <laughs> Yeah, just flubby and nasty. So bring that bass down. Kind of somewhere there, bring the mids down a little bit. Touch a bit more bass in that. You know, it's still got mids, it's still got bass uh, because that drive is giving it some welly. Bringing that right down, you'll have to crank this bass just to kind of compensate on that input kind of preamp stage. <laughs> So a ton of different kind of clean sounds right there. Um, uh, Paul is on. Strong compression sets in after a suit. Uh, right, okay. In which case, so I'm going to try and remember to mute my mic, and hopefully that's going to sort that horrible compression thing out. Um, yeah, I hope that didn't do it. I did a test one earlier, and whatever. So... Uh, let's try this. So, uh, so I've cranked the drive. I'm actually going to crank the master. Now for this, I'm going to bring the bass right the way down and the treble up, present down a little bit, and mids down a little bit. And this is going to be a, a, a super kind of almost fuzzy, uh, cranked, uh, boogie sound, that little kind of boogie that Santana used. It's that kind of thing. So, uh, give my mic and see what it sounds like. Mm -hmm. 
background. Hopefully that didn't compress there. Um, and hopefully it didn't. And you could hear that's kind of very much that Santana-esque kind of little amp absolutely caning uh, the, the volume on that. And like I say, kind of, you wouldn't expect that out of, uh, if we go to the stock setting, uh, and we'll bring that mids back a wee bit to clean it up, and it sounds like that. Paul says that didn't sort it. Um, damn. Right. So I don't know how to solve that. I'm going to try and look into that again and see if we can figure that out. Apologies. I'll try not to play for very long uh, and see if we can get around it that way. No idea why it's doing that. Maybe a YouTube thing. Um, not sure. We'll figure that out. Right. So that's kind of pretty much channel one. Um, a ton of different sounds straight away, but it's a great pedal platform uh, as well. So if you've got dirt pedals, you can just throw those in the front end and it will take an absolute beating. So whereas normally um, sort of clean amps, if you've got a pedal that sounds great, kind of cranked or is a very, very loud pedal anyway, um, you're going to lose some of that by having to bring the volume of that pedal down. The, the Cali Texas or the Boogie Lone Star um, in real life will take it no problem at all. The front end takes an absolute beating. So, uh, channel two. Now, channel two is fascinating because it does, uh, channel one does a ton of stuff. Channel two, you can go from sparkly crystal clear to just super high gain shred. Um, but again, um, it, it takes a little bit of tweaking, and the EQ is exactly the same. But you've got a few more controls on this. Tony says, uh, OBS has a tendency to act up sometimes with all the gear we're running in our live streams. Yeah, uh, I'm actually not running OBS, Tony, so I don't know what's happening. Something to do with something, um, but I'll get tech on it and see if we can figure it out. Um, so channel two, you've got two drive controls. Now, um, on the actual amp, there's a little switch on uh, channel two, which kind of engages the drive. So this is the kind of drive that would be engaged. And that's a kind of a higher frequency uh, drive. Drive two is the natural one, and that's a thicker one. Uh, bass metal treble, presence again. And then you've got this kind of shape thing, a uh, normal thick and thicker, and that shifts the mid range. So normal is at its tightest. Thick just adds some girth, and thicker adds even more girth. Um, uh, we won't bother with uh, changing the master uh, controls or the SAG or anything like that. Uh, we're just going to stick with this. So out of the box, it sounds here. And uh, through doing all that, I forgot to, uh, yeah, yeah, Paul, I know, I forgot to unmute my mic. So without touching a thing, I've just uh, let's done the uh, normal thick and thicker modes. Um, and you can kind of hear that kind of um, the low end or the low mid girth coming in. So let's just totally transform this for you now. So let's bring the drive one back right down um, the bass back a wee bit. Um, I don't need to compensate with that. And that should be a really nice kind of just on the edge of breakup clean sound. <laughs> So 
So with no pedals, we're in kind of Andy Timmons territory. Just give that a little bit more of that and a little bit less of that. Um, some delay maybe, and we're sort of in this territory. sounds a little bit something like that so just um it's almost like kind of channel one but boosted um uh, the bass control when uh, you're getting into higher gain territory on this it just makes it go super flubby so if we crank the drives for you right now uh we're gonna need to bring uh the bass back a wee bit uh, i think that compression of the guitar signal uh, auto adjusting a volume on the input. Maybe let me just check something in the settings. Huh? Okay. I'm going to try something now and right. Okay. I've just tweaked something in the settings. Let's see if that does anything. Uh, cheers, Boxer. <laughs> well, thank you. If it works. Um, so I've just changed something and see if this works. Mike, with the bass where it was, that's going to get super flubby and nasty. Actually, that's a good nasty. That's kind of like fuzz territory. Oh, I like that a lot. Um, but normally I would have the bass basically off. And if you look at any kind of um, user of this amp and you look at the controls, the bass is like off. But they usually got these drives cranked. Um, and let's just see how much we can get out of this. So when you're getting into the super high gain territory, what you want to do is boost that treble, kill the bass uh, mid to kind of taste, but absolutely smash that treble right the way up. Presence is kind of going to be to taste. Normally I'd have it around here. Um, and this is just going to get into kind of shreddy stuff. <laughs> Now, not many people kind of get that much gain out of a Lone Star, but the beauty of this, you can kind of crank that master um, and and really kind of get this. So let's bring those mids down a wee bit, a bit more presence. Let's go to the thick mode uh, and see what that sounds like. <laughs> Beautiful. We like that a lot. Um, now going up here, getting rid of some more of those mids. That's just going to tighten it up that little bit more um, and do something like that. And bring that drive one back a little bit. Um, that's going to make it kind of less fuzzy on the top end. <laughs> Oh, sorry, Mark album. Um, kind of almost new now. Go to the thicker mode, it's going to beef it up even more. You maybe use that for kind of single coils. So if I tap the um, uh, bridge pickup now, kind of 
does that thing. Um, but go to the normal mode. So for essentially what I think normally uh, has been considered kind of a bluesier amp or a jazzy amp, there's there's a lot of stuff you can get out of this. Bring that drive one right the way back. Give it a little bit more bass, just a just a touch. Uh, bring that treble down and the presence down, and we get into that territory. <laughs> kind of got a JTM vibe about it um, so yeah now let's just have a little experiment real quick get drive two down drive one up a little bit of bass a bit more mids and some presence somewhere around there uh, Paul, whatever you changed on the settings, it solved the compression issue. Brilliant. Right. I'll remember that for next time. Amazing stuff. Um, right. So you'll notice on this, I'll try not muting my mic as much now. See if that does anything. Um, so drive one, like I said, is the kind of the brighter of the two. You need a little bit of drive two, otherwise it's just, it's just silent. Uh, <laughs> notice here it's just kind of it it's almost kind of fizzy versus drive two So that's that kind of super kind of fuzzy low end version um, and drive one is the higher end. Normally I live somewhere around here and that works for me. It's a great kind of um, right on the edge of breakup. It, it's got a little bit of hair to it, but not sort of super hairy. It cuts through in a band mix brilliantly, and it's awesome with, you can hear the kind of guitar. Um, so on a humbucker, kind of, it crunches up. But split that coil on the bridge, and you get real nice kind of jangly uh, single coil sound. kind of position for the kind of two out phase things. Just slightly cleans up great. But bring that 
drive back even more and get just get into beautiful clean 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 territory Ooh, travel down presence down normal mode <laughs> presence down even more it's kind of almost bensony even with a single call so something to remember with the presence um that's kind of again it's not your normal frequencies the presence um just takes it really dark but it's kind of more like an extreme high mid. Um, so less kind of the sparkly, shimmery stuff um, and more kind of like um, a frequency that I can't name at the moment. Uh, kind of the same with a treble. It's not your traditional treble control, uh, but it is going to push that front end. Again, boogies are generally all about the mids. That mid control is almost like an extra bass control. Oh, I like that. Um, but with the channel two, kind of the drive low, Everything at sort of five ish. Just a really sweet clean sound. Now, using this as a pedal platform, let's get rid of this so we can put some pedals in here. Um, the it, it's it's kind of beefy enough and juicy enough uh, and thick enough to take whatever you throw at it. So uh, let's go with the air apparent, my favorite. So on the boost mode, the least compression, you absolutely smash that front end. This is probably going to be loud. Um, it's going to absolutely take that um, and, and just respond beautifully. <laughs> sweet um but things like the hedgehogs which we've kind of covered before and again that pedal doesn't really like a lot of amps this is just going to soak it up give that a bit more juice so we even get even more high end <laughs> kind of being the traditional fizzy horribleness um, uh, that you would normally get out of that kind of pedal it, it, it's just thick and beefy uh, Book says I'd love to hear the crystal clean sound you mentioned well let's get the crystal clean sound so bring that back even more scoop a little bit of those mids out <laughs> some of that on let's put that over there and because you know chorus is a thing add some more presence It's just clean and clear, but it's just got so much kind of beef to it. Um, absolutely love that. 
uh, like an 80s pop clean. Yep, yeah, um, that's my 80s pop clean. But um, if you want kind of country clean, it's that too. <laughs> Juice on that side. It's almost kind of, dare I say, dumbly. Um, let's go to the thick mode. Uh, that will boost the gain slightly, so bring that down just a hair more. Uh, kind of. Uh, I don't know any Corey one, but it's that kind of thing. So, it, yeah, it does kind of super, super clean as well. Um... Uh, Alex says, why do I put the effects in a separate chain? Uh, one of the mix on the effects do the same. Uh, is there a difference or is it just preference? It, 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 it is preference. Yes, the mix kind of does a similar job. Um, but so let's just do this to show you. So on the reverb, for example. So here's my reverb. Turn it on. Um... Yeah, I can actually give the mix even more. So it's no, it's like lovely and wet. Bring that down. That kind of dry guitar signal is a lot more uh, prominent for me, for my ears anyway. Um, and kind of using certain effects and uh, uh, huge rack systems, I'll throw my pick. Um, that kind of parallel chain is just something that I'm used to, probably more noticeable on gainy sounds, but yeah, it's habit more than anything. Um, and I just think it sounds a little bit better, keeps the effect out of the way. Um, so that's channel two as, um, uh, as a clean, wonderful beast, that kind of, uh, Marshally Britishy thing. Um, you want to go around here, and that should be there. Almost kind of cranked, uh, non master volume thing happening there. <laughs> That's what that does. Um, and if you want the full kind of Andy Timmons lead tone, which I'm going to hazard a guess there are some people in here that want that. Um, bass just kind of pretty much off, mids somewhere around there, presence low, and uh, I'm going to go around there. Just eyeballing this. I'm guessing. I did. There is. If you go on custom tone um, and touch for Roscoe, that's my account on there, and you'll find my Andy Timmons preset. But kind of sounds something like this. Less of that. Less of that. More of that. <laughs> quite loud enough without uh, causing my neighbor's distress um but there we go so again kind of pedal platform this takes uh, the drive channel even with 
some gain does take pedals great get rid of you so you got kind of a big thick thing there maybe a little too thick So that's great. So again, with this being a kind of a black facey style thing, you wouldn't expect it to take fuzz pedals very well. But let's put a fuzz on there uh, for the arbitrary fuzz face thing. So. Um, fuzz face style circuits just dislike immensely kind of that fendery blackface kind of thing it's a sound but it's not a particularly pleasing sound it's not kind of the the fuzz face that we love but uh yeah that channel 2 gets in that territory where it just soaks up um uh, fuzz faces brilliantly and yeah again just totally transform uh the sound of that amp so to get into more shred territory well, perfect example. These, uh, the 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 wonderful DS1, uh, we love to hate it. It does a thing, for sure. Let's get somewhere around there. That's what I'm looking for. And this sounds great. No, it doesn't. That sounds awful. Where are you? There we go. There we go. Even less drive. We're into that kind of territory. So, amazing pedal platform, great as a two channel thing. Uh, let's just go back bring that down so this is kind of where we started pretty much it's going to 12 uh 12 o'clock five all of those so everything's at five just a killer clean sound <laughs> let's go to channel two do kind of the same Bring that back. Match the levels a wee bit. Give that some more welly, that less welly. Now I've got a two channel preset. And that's, I mean, you know, tip of the iceberg um, uh, for this particular amp model. There is so much that you can do with it. It's insane. Um, so it really is a case of kind of have a mess around. It responds tremendously to different guitars. So if you've got a hollow body, um, it, it, you're going to hear that. That's, that's kind of why I love this amp so much because... Although as, as thick as it is and as beefy as it is, it's still got clarity. You can kind of still hear humbuckers, you still hear single coils, solid bodies versus hollow bodies, so on and so forth. So you, you can really hear the true kind of character of the guitar, which I think is important or is important for me because I change guitars because I want a different sound. I'll, I'll stick with the same preset, but 
like you would in, a, a, I guess, a non-digital scenario, there's not many of us that can take out multiple amps uh, or multiple rigs for different guitars. So that's kind of where I live, is just super simple presets. Um, and I only change presets if I need a special effect. That's just me. You may be different, but like I said earlier, uh, and if you came in late, go back to the beginning uh, and check what I'm talking about, the controls, because the controls are important. You you wouldn't normally use kind of the EQ section uh, as you would on m most other amps, kind of boogies are different. The EQ section is before all of the gain, so when you're cranking bass, you're just going to get flubby and, and horrible. Uh, Buxter says, if you're going to build a two amps at once patch, what amp would you pair it with? Um, I think I've done a stream on this before. Uh, it's kind of whatever you're after, really. So um, my mentality with multi-amp rigs, and I've kind of been using a couple recently, but normally I'll go clean kind of platform and then just a ton of different pedals. Um, it's sort of whatever I'm feeling at the time, but generally, again, my mentality with this is I have a clean sound in my head and I have a gain sound in my head and, and it's just kind of varying levels of distortion from there. So if I'm feeling particularly British, I'll go with a Marshall. Uh, normally kind of I stick with the boogie amps because that's what I know and I know what I can get out of them. Um, and I know kind of how to use pedals with them basically. But yeah, that's where I would go. I would generally have something that wasn't too far removed. So if you've got, you know, a model of a, a Princeton and you go to the Badonk, it's quite a drastic kind of difference. Uh, but it really kind of depends on what you're doing um, and your personal preference. There's, there's no rules. Um, bear in mind, some amp models will take up more DSP so if you're using, so I'm just using Stomp for this. If you're using um, uh, uh, Full Helix, you've got a bit more scope to do that. Obviously, if you're on Pod Go, you only have access to one amp model. Um, so for me, I would pair it with something kind of similar or complementary. Otherwise, it might just get into kind of a weird territory, I think. Uh, but that's opinion and personal preference. It, there's no rules. It's it's entirely up to you. Um, something worth mentioning, by the way. So uh, what I've been trying to do with these deep dive videos recently, I uh, did one of the Badonks, so go and check that out. Um, obviously, the Cali Texas Channel 1 and 2 tonight. So if you're not aware, we've started a cool new series um, on Instagram called Amp of the Week. And every week, we've got a new amp. Some have multiple channels and... Um, Myself, um, the beautiful Tony Campanovo, and the beautiful Nick Bell, and the extra beautiful Paul Heinmarsh. We've all done some samples. Um, they're live on Instagram now. So if you haven't subscribed to Instagram or follow us on Instagram, go check that out. Um, a video or multiple videos a week. And yeah, just some sound samples from, uh, from all of the different amp models, which if you haven't had the time to kind of go through, it'll give you a good idea of what each of them sound like um and yeah the the guys have made them sound cool mine are okay but may your own bite up so if you haven't already go and check out our instagram all the ample of the week stuff is on there and we're going to be continuing that for the foreseeable uh because there's a lot of amps to get through um so i don't think we've got any more questions um so yeah i mean that's kind of the cali texas channel one and two Ton of different sounds, both from the clean and the dirty sound. You can get clean and dirty sounds out of both of them. Um, go and have a play, uh, have a mess around. It's such a great amp model. It's my favorite because it does pretty much anything I need it to do. And anything it doesn't do, I can do with pedals. And it takes pedals brilliantly. So thank you so much for tuning in. We're going to do another one of these next week. Um, so same time, same place. Keep your eyes out. Thank you so much for tuning in. Go and follow us on Instagram and do that thing because there's some amazing content on there. Um, and I'll keep an eye on for any questions. Thanks for tuning in. See you again soon. Take care.